Hey everyone, this is Rob the Movie Buff, Rob and Elise here with Movie Reviews. Thanks for tuning in again. Here are my thoughts on a pair of movies and a TV show. Uh, the movies, Shazam! Fury of the Gods and John Wick 4 and The Last of Us, the TV show. I reached the first Shazam uh, recently after I had seen it twice in theaters when it first came out. And I still enjoy it a ton even though I knew all the story beats and the characters and events. It had what seemed at the time to be a weird combination of both comedy and horror elements when it was first promoted, especially with David Sandberg as director. He had previously done Lights Out in 2016, which was originally a YouTube short turned into a full feature, and then did Annabelle Creation. But all that comedy and horror, the combination still worked really well. Um, The villain was introduced well enough, and Mark Strong was intimidating, but also given a great backstory. The combination of Billy Batson, played by Asher Angel, dealing with his mom, leaving him, and having to go to yet another foster home, coupled with him having to balance a new family with the gaining of superpowers, uh, surprising superpowers after meeting a wizard, played by Jaman Hunsu, just gaining those powers by just saying Shazam, and uh, that older adult character, played really well and really fun by Zachary Levi, and then having to deal with the criminals, a supervillain, and fame. It made for a compelling inner conflict for Billy. Um, also, Freddie Freeman, played by Jack Dylan Grazer. Billy's brother was great on screen next to both next to both Asher Angel and Zachary Levi. Even though his character comes out a bit a tad annoying at the beginning, once you fully understand his perspective as a disabled kid who everyone just ignores and bullies, you really empathize with Freddie. And everything felt so new at the first one, especially with all the adopted kids in the home at the very end gaining all their powers and having to use them with, you know, baptism under fire but finding a way to succeed. And in the sequel, as with most sequels, there has to be bigger stakes and more plot. But I feel like those elements and having far more Zachary Levi as Shazam um, than Asher Angel's Billy Batson, it made it a very generic superhero entry. The villains, the daughters of Atlas, Helen Mirren as Aspira, Lucy Lewis, Calypso, and Rachel Zegler as Anthea are introduced without much backstory or fully understanding um, anything of their past. And even though Rachel Zegler and Helen Mirren do a lot with what they're given on the screenplay, um, I think one of the big issues is that just any attempted horror and death scenes felt a little at least a tad, if not much tamer than the first, and they were trying to cater to more family at some point, but other times it came off as jarring when horror was uh, introduced. Um, it kind of took me out of those scenes. Especially disappointing as well that the side stories with Freddy and then the, uh, and the wizard became a lot more compelling than all the stuff with Shazam and the Power Family. I think there are a few decent cameos and a couple not so great and some decent comedy and some not so great. Um, but overall, I didn't have a ton good or bad to say about this movie, other than performances are good, but I thought it went in too far into the universe superhero building instead of that of a family dynamic story. And the attempts to get back into the family dynamic storyline just didn't feel as genuine. If you asked me to rate it, I'd probably go between a 5 or 6 out of 10, or 3 to 5 out of lower box, maybe a little lower than that. Um, Next thing is The Last of Us, which is a TV show based on an incredibly popular video game series. I have not played and have only heard bits and pieces pieces of the story before watching the show. The main thing that attracted me to it was the creator Craig Mazin, being the creator of one of my favorite uh, main series of all time in Chernobyl. I thought he did a really incredible job with that series with a great um, historic retelling of both the bureaucracy that caused a nuclear meltdown and then the bad response to it and the bravery and struggle of those tasked with uh, trying to fix the problems caused um, at, you know, their own risk and peril. Um, One of the best aspects of The Last of Us was the um, cold openings of the show in episodes 1, 2, and 9 that were ominous about the fungi disease um, that spread... um, to lead to a pandemic involving humans becoming zombie-like creatures, and then the tough decisions those characters face in those instances. Uh, What was also fantastic were the performances of the two lead characters, Joel, played by Pedro Pascal, and Ellie, played by Bella Ramsey. Joel's a man who lost his daughter, and 
the beginning of the pandemic while trying to save her as brother Tommy, played by Gabriel Luna, while Ellie is a young girl who appears to be immune to the fungi disease, and Joel is tasked with taking her to a facility that could potentially provide a full cure with their help. The chemistry of the two leads uh, in the show um, helps make Ellie's um, softening of the tough exterior of Joel with her gregarious and joking attitude feel really genuine, and it makes any situation that the two of them are in danger that much more intense. With those two as the main characters throughout the entire first season, Sporting characters, some appear in one episode, others in a couple, have to bring a lot to the story to make their presence worthwhile to the plot. And the casting and performances uh, for the whole season on that front are incredible as well. The broader the relationship with Joel and Tommy is played out in just a couple episodes, but Luna and Pascal have a few really heartwarming and emotional scenes that make any time they get separated or have a disagreement um, really sad and um, poignant. And then other stellar guest supporting performances include Anna Torf as Joel's romantic partner Tess, Lamar Johnson, Kayvon Woodard as two brothers, Henry and Sam, respectively, that Joel and Ellie meet and team up with. All are, you know, memorable characters, but maybe the biggest um, guest appearances are in episode three with Murray Bartlett, um, who plays a completely different character than the one he did in uh, White Lotus season one, and uh, Nick Offerman. They are in maybe my favorite episode of the series thus far, um, episode three, and it includes the um, use of one of my favorite um, tracks ever by Max Richter, a guest composer, um, his track On the Nature of Daylight. It's one that I absolutely love whenever it's used. It's been used in Shutter Island and a couple other um, TV shows, and I love him as a composer as well. Um, the voice and motion capture actors from the original game series, such as Troy Baker, who voiced Joel, and he also voices um, Batman slash Bruce Wayne in the Telltale game series um, for Batman that I really enjoy. Ashley Johnson, she voiced Ellie in the game, and she comes back in one later episode as a different character. And same with Jeffrey Pierce, who voiced Tommy in the game. Um, but they all still make a great impression as characters different than what they originally played in the series in the video game series. And then Meryl Dandridge plays both Marlene in the game and in the show, and she's great as well. The VFX and production of the design of the show are really impressive, or about as impressive as any show on TV, along with whenever the fun guys, zombies, do show up in full force, it's super intense, with one scene in particular that incorporates both CGI and practical zombies with the help of Terry Notary from the Planet of the Apes scene. As a whole, the show has been my favorite of 2023 um, so far though if i had any negatives there are long spaces between zombie action at times and it does peak with a couple episodes but overall i'd give it about eight and a half to nine out of ten and first big hbo show on and the next one starts this week uh succession the last season so i'm excited for that finally uh john wick chapter four is a culmination of an action franchise that was initially a risk by Director Chad Stahelski, he was previously a stuntman on the Matrix movies with uh, Keanu Reeves. They developed a um, really great relationship, and he had him come on to the John Wick first movie. But no one, no studio had bought the first movie up to two months before the release. And now it's um, at its fourth installment, and its latest installment is pretty much action movie cinema at its finest, in my opinion. Keanu Reeves, again, returns as John Wick after he shot after he shot off a roof by the New York Continental roof manager um, Winston, played by Ian McShane again at the end of Chapter 3, Parabellum. And he's physically and mentally training for revenge against the high table that's excommunicated him with the help of the Bowery King, played by Lawrence Fishburne. Wick specifically has to deal with the Marquis de Gramont, uh, played by Bill Skarsgård, a member of the high table who puppet masters the resources of the high table to go after Wick and anyone who has aided him in the past, and in doing so, manipulating a part, pair of assassins to go after the Baba Yaga. One is Kane, played by Donnie Yen, a blind assassin who is an old friend of Wick, forced by the Marquis to kill John or risk losing someone close to him, while Mr. Nobody, uh, played by Shamir Anderson, is a fellow assassin with a trained fighter dog who has been tracking Wick for a long time. That's the most I'll get into about the uh, plot to avoid story spoilers, but 
chapter four has so many incredible action sequences that it's difficult to come up with a top ten, much less the top five of them in this movie. They include horseback, nunchucks, gun and knife play simultaneously, samurai swords, stairs, car chases, a great um, top-down shot, one take, and so much more. There's even one near the Arc de Triomphe that matches and may even best a stunt that was done in um, that same uh, area of the Arc de Triomphe in uh, Mission Impossible Fallout. And that's a phrase I never think I'd say with how much love and appreciation I have for the stunt work in the Mission Impossible series. Reeves is, you know, phenomenal and kills it throughout, you know, with his martial arts skills and all these fight scenes. But he has to face off. And uh, again, some of the best in the business with, you know, Yen Anderson, Haruki Sanada as the manager of Continental Hotel in Osaka, um, Scott Adkins, another great martial artist. He's a fun, scenery-chewing um, character on the level of kind of like Jaws in the old James Bond films, and Marco Zorro as a henchman for the Marquis, and they all really you know, do a great job with all the action scenes as well. Um, the supporting performances by the late, you know, Lance Reddick as Sharon, the concierge, and uh, Rina Sawayama as the concierge for the Hotel Nasaka. They're also great, and, you know, they are great in, you know, small emotional um, bits in the movie. Besides just the incredible action sequences, and they're all practical um, for the most part, the one way John Wick continually differentiates itself from uh, the re other revenge-based action films or action franchises as a whole it's just how beautifully visual it is and cinematographer dan lotson um he's done um the last three john wick movies john wick 2 john wick 3 parabellum and now john wick chapter 4 and he's a frequent collaborator with guillermo del toro and it's just continually improving his craft to the point where this one is honestly one of the most gorgeous um action films i've seen in a long time in films overall and you know if it's not, you know, too snobbish by the Oscars, it should be considered next year, even though it's a long way ahead. But it's just so gorgeous, especially in the nightclub scenes and, you know, just anywhere with buildings as well. They really do a great job of production design in combination with uh, cinematography to create really impressive visuals. Um, and then there's just weak, excuse me, um, Western and Greek tragedy vibes that are just so um, beautiful and another great tree in it and there's an early reference to um, Lawrence of Arabia at the very beginning um, and there's just a lot of scenes that you know since the first one we haven't gotten to know John as emotionally as we would have liked to um, since that's the first one that introduces you know him losing his wife and then you know having the dog um, of his um, that was given to him by his wife get killed but in this one, there's a lot of scenes that, like, retrospectively look at John's life and who he's interacted with and um, what effect that has on, you know, him and uh, his legacy and his life and lives of others. And um, they provide great weight emotionally to those, um, to everything going on with just those incredible action scenes again. So um, overall, I really don't have much to complain. If anything, to complain is just... Um, like I said, um, action, masterpiece, cinema, it's finest. And right now I have it 5 out of 5 on Letterboxd, but, you know, I can't wait to rewatch it either in theaters or on uh, streaming or DVD at some point. But, yeah, those were my reviews for Shazam! Fury of the Gods, Last of Us, and John Wick Chapter 4. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in and hope to get you some more movie reviews at some point. Thank you, guys.